Welcome to Fridays with Coco. I don't know about you, but sometimes it seems like I'm trying to read something, and even if I have a magnifying glass and squint and close one eye, I'm not sure I can still read the fine print. But maybe that's just the way everything is. Maybe I'm not supposed to know everything. This week through the Ecumenical Prayer Cycle, we will be praying for people who live in Colombia, Ecuador, and Venezuela, right around this part of Coco's Beach Ball Globe, by praying for these people this week, by name, by country name, and other countries in the world every week, we will cover God's entire world in one year. As you can see, there's always a lot to look at, a lot of very fine details, and you might just need a magnifying glass before we're done. Let's begin with a reading of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. After the feeding of the 5,000, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after they were dismissed, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat the disciples were in was being battered by the waves and was far from the land, for the wind was against them. Early in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. But when the disciples saw him walking, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! Immediately, Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water, going toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. Peter cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped Jesus, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You heard it here. We have heard, and we will tell the story. Speaking of magnifying glasses, Coco's poem is entitled, Who Am I to Say Otherwise? There are those who are convinced the only way to believe is by one's own sight, and I give them a hearty hip hip hooray for wanting truth to show its own light. There are others who only need one or two pieces of a puzzle to get their mind going. And they're off like a shot, forming their own pictures and ideas with no signs of slowing. Who am I to say otherwise? Let's get down to the heart of the matter I wish to share with you today. That is, there are many things unseen to the eye beneath the ocean's foamy spray. Some are called mountains, similar to the 1,187,049 found on dry land. More than one million mountains are in oceans, beyond the beach, beyond the sand. Who am I to say otherwise? Scientists have kept themselves busy studying the mountains above the ground, yet have only paid attention to about 150 under the oceans, and here's why, I've found. The Mariana Trench, at a depth of seven miles, has the deepest deeps of the open sea. Science tells us the pressure on a diving human is too dangerous, speaking crushingly. Who am I to say otherwise? If you're like me, you don't want the equivalent of 50 jumbo jets on top of your head. Thank you, scientists for studying this and explaining why a diver would have dread. 
Somehow, fish can tolerate this pressure. But if offered gills, I'd say, no thank you. Surely the makeup of a fish is much more complex cartilage, air sacs, and tissue. Who am I to say otherwise? Let's cover one more subject about truths beneath the surface that may be found. It's about those frozen floating mountains that may be seen from the ground. We glibly say it's just the tip of an iceberg, believing there's much more below. Truth be told, there's as much as 90% under the surface. Maybe yes, maybe no. Who am I to say otherwise? Well, that sounds kind of like a believe it or not kind of story, doesn't it? You don't have to agree with me, but it's always better if you do. I've learned that from Coco. It's always better to just kind of go along with things. Today is the second in a series of five videos in which we're exploring some of the travels of Jesus with summer travels the mice took, taking me in tow to five different locations. And we're including a journey song or hymn. Today we feature Toronto, Ontario. And each guest will share a believe it or not question or two. You also see on display a really beautiful piece of paper that is called marbled paper. And this was made by some of Coco's wonderful friends at China River Marblers in Amherst, Massachusetts. Let's go to the BTW basket of Toronto surprises to learn more about people, places, creatures, and hear some believe it or not questions. How many of you know what this is? I'll give you a hint. It's a scotch egg. Delicious. And it was one of the first things the mice and I had to eat when we went to Toronto, never realizing that's what we would find there. And we ended up having like one every day. By the way, number one, my name is Amelia and I'm glad Coco invited me to come and share. And here's what I have first of all, two believe it or not questions. The first is, would you believe or not someone without traditional sight could become an expert watchmaker? The second believe it or not question is, would you believe the Scotch egg was invented in Scotland? To which I'll just tell you, no, because it was first made about 300 years ago in a London eatery owned by William Scott, and it became dubbed as a Scotty, we just now call it Scotch egg. And the scripture, Jesus comes to us. That's it, pure and simple. Jesus comes to us. We don't need to step into the water or create our own turmoil to test whether Jesus will save us or not, because he does and he will. I believe my stay in the boat faith really works. I see it evidence itself every day through struggles and celebrations all the time. And I don't need to save a seat for Jesus or do any kind of pretend he was there action. He just is. Okay, the believe it or not number one, yes. A man named Peter Jaegers from Belgium was an expert watchmaker, blind from the age of 18 months. Believe it or not, I would say if one of Coco's guests tell me that something is true, I should believe them. Here's a wonderful picture of um, a grouper that I was able to snap while in an aquarium in Toronto. 
And what's amazing, this fish is really huge. And this one eye was like almost right up against the, the glass. And I kind of wondered if it was trying to communicate with me or not. And if so, maybe I just haven't received the message yet. By the way, number two, my name is Lucas and I'm from Northern New York State, but most of my relatives live near Toronto, a place I love to visit. I also have two, believe it or not, questions. The first is, would you believe four dolphins in New Zealand in 1956 taught themselves to juggle bottles? The second question is, would you believe a Queensland grouper can weigh as much as 800 pounds? To which I'll just tell you, they can, but only in rare circumstances. I love the reading about Jesus walking on water. I'm not sure if I could, but I believe Jesus could. And as far as putting one's complete trust in Jesus, I think it's important to not think of Jesus, great healer that he is, as doing or just fixing things to the extent we stop being responsible, like not seeking medical care when needed, etc., etc., etc. I believe Jesus was demonstrating that no matter what kind of difficulties we have in our lives, he will be with us to figuratively walk through our storms and dangerous waves. Now, how about those four dolphins teaching themselves to juggle bottles? It's an answer that's yes and no. There were dolphins that taught themselves to juggle bottles, but there were only two. So I guess you could say my question was a little bit of a trick question. But then again, I also have to say to you, Believe it or not, and this is one of those Queensland fish that's just so amazing. I was just The color was so beautiful, and because I'm completely into green, I had to have a, a picture of that immediately. By the way, number three, my name is Francine. I also have two believe it or not questions. The first is, would you believe dragonflies have 30,000 eyes? The second is, would you believe there is a bear in Toronto twice the height of a human to which I assure you the answer is yes, but I am sure also it has never attempted to climb up to the top of the 1,815 foot tall CN Tower because the bear is made of bronze. I'm a total nut about boats and fishing, and I know some kinds of fishing are best done when it's raining, though not necessarily storming. Water seems to be a theme today. And I know the Matthew reading focuses a lot on Jesus walking on water. Miraculous, I would say, or so it seems at first. After all, why wouldn't Jesus just do such a thing? I think the greater miracle is that Peter stepped out of the boat. And why? Simple. Jesus invited him. But there may be more to this. Peter may have done this because he wasn't sure if he would sink or not. I think he wanted to find out for himself. And the dragonfly with the 30,000 eyes? Nope. But dragonflies do have five eyes and two of them are very, very special because they can contain up to 30,000 lenses each. Believe it or not, we're kind of testing our beliefs a little bit around here, aren't we? Well, it's okay. I, I assure you it's quite harmless. 
And here we are at that place called How Can We Be at, by the way, number four already, and yet we are. By the way, number four, my name is Vincent. I also have two Believe It or Not questions. The first is, did Paul Revere take false credit for his famous ride in 1775? The second is, would you believe there is a leather elephant sculpture outside of the Gallery of Ontario, the Art Gallery of Ontario in Toronto? To which I say, no, there is an elephant, but it's not leather. It is made of bronze and looks exactly like leather. I've heard the walking on the water story many, many times, ever since I was a child. And I still wonder really what it means if there's really any one thing that it should mean. In chatting with Coco's guests after we all arrived here last night, I began to realize there's no mention about the disciples being concerned that Jesus was actually doing this, was actually walking on the water and doing it during rough seas and a storm and really high winds. Certainly, he must have been in a certain amount of danger. Their first thought was to think they were seeing a ghost. And I do believe they weren't sure if it was Jesus at first because Peter, when invited to step into the water, prefaces his response with these words, If it is you, Lord, if, if, how could he not know? And then Peter does step out on the water. And he's just fine until apparently he takes his eyes off Jesus. And that's when he begins to sink. What a wonderful lesson. Turning our eyes upon Jesus and keeping our eyes upon Jesus. And that believe it or not thing about Paul Revere, again, yes and no. Paul Revere started to ride from Boston to Concord with two others, but they were stopped by law enforcement and only one of the other two was permitted to continue the ride and did make it. Paul Revere never did but we also have no record of him saying that he did. It's as if we've just kind of made that up. Believe it or not, I kind of like this believe it or not stuff. You know, it's kind of like when someone tells you a story and you wonder, hmm, should I believe it or not? And, um, Animals are great at making up those kinds of stories, like asking them what they did all day and getting the sort of the shrug of, I didn't do anything, but if I go in and put my hand on the television, it's always warm, so I know better. By the way, number five, my name is Chloe, and I'm from Frankfort, Kentucky, where many people came from Germany and settled including my family, starting with my great-grandparents. I also have two, believe it or not, questions, and the first one pertains to my German heritage. Would you believe the first plush teddy bear was created by Marguerite Steiff in Germany in 1902? The second is, would you believe the largest iron nails in Canada are over six feet long? To which I'll just tell you, yes, there are six foot iron nails in Canada and they're used to disguise light fixtures in St. James Anglican Church in Dundas, Ontario, just outside of Toronto. 
the building was severely burned in 1978 and in sifting through the rubble, old nails were found, inspiring the people to use that symbol in rebuilding. And who doesn't associate nails with Jesus? Our Matthew reading ended with these words, and those in the boat worshiped Jesus saying, truly you are the son of God. There it is, the acknowledgement that Jesus is the Messiah. But more significantly, the very first time the disciples could see, understand, and were convinced of this. All of us have aha moments or epiphanies or turn certain corners in our lives, but this one is significant because it speaks to how part of the human condition is to not be sure until we can see and know for ourselves with our own eyes, our ears, and of course, our hearts. And the stifed teddy bear? The answer is yes. The stifed teddy bear was first produced by the stifed company as the first teddy bear manufactured in the world. But what people may not know is that the whole Stife company was started by Marguerite Stife despite severe physical limitations and paralysis of her legs caused by polio. Believe it or not, well, I'll say one thing. I believe all these guests somehow show up when I'm at choir rehearsal on Thursday night. By the time I get home, they're either deep in conversation and don't want to hear from me, or they've all gone to bed, and then I get up in the morning and they sort of share a little bit enough that I might try to share a couple of things myself. Coco taught us in her poem, which has this really, really beautiful, well, you know, it's like a, a bigger version of this thing. She taught us, hang on a sec, she taught us in her poem how there are so many different realities and perspectives. We don't all see things the same way. If we're not really convinced of what we're hearing, then our first question might be, who am I to say otherwise? In other words, maybe I don't really know the difference. And the response could just be someone shrugging and say, eh, it's up to you, believe it or not. When I was 11, my mom and dad for Christmas gave me a deck of cards and not just any deck of cards, but a deck of Ripley's Believe It or Not playing cards. And I still have the little box and you know, I used to have a stamp and all of that kind of thing. And there are 52, there are no jokers here. I think I'm the only joker who might be around here. And I loved reading the cards when I'd be playing a game. So that pretty much meant I had to be playing solitaire because no one would wanna play a game with me if I spent most of my time just looking and reading the cards, each and every one of them, every time. Each of Coco's guests had two believe it or not questions. One taken from this deck of cards and they're kind of all spread out here. Some of them are under Larry's car that's, that's spinning around. And one of the believe it or not questions was based on something that had to do with the trip that the mice took to Toronto with, as I say, me in tow. Now, Perhaps you might be wondering, because we always have so many extraneous things and rely on you to piece it all together. You might be wondering how we brought the idea of these Ripley, believe it or not, cards into this video. Well, it's really quite simple. We visited the Ripley's Aquarium in Toronto, which is where I got that fabulous picture of, of that fish and saw 
many other things that I had really never seen before. So one thing, as I always say, leads to another. And with me in life, I always think one question leads me not to the answer, but to the next question. And that's what helps keep me going on a daily basis. How often scripture, when we take even some little tiny thing, will be jogging each of our memories in a very, very different way. Maybe some of you relate to, maybe you had these cards 55 years ago, or some other little thing. But we always hope that you find a way to have the scripture relate directly to your life on this day. And if you're pretty sure that others might hear it or see it in a different way, it gives you all the more reason to go and tell the story. There's a wonderful hymn entitled, It Is Well With My Soul. Now, believe it or not, it was written by Horatio Spafford in 1871. He had just said goodbye or bon voyage to his wife and four daughters when they set sail from New York heading for England. Horatio expected to join them when he finished some business things in about a month's time. Crossing the ocean, the ship was involved in a collision with another ship and sank. Over 200 people perished. Horatio's wife did not, and when she reached England, she sent a two-word cablegram, saved alone. Horatio immediately dropped everything he was doing, booked passage on a ship for England, and he asked the captain to let him know when they would get to that area where the other ship had gone down, where his four daughters had perished. And in that moment, without realizing it, he went out onto the deck and flooding into his mind was this whole sense of it is well with my soul. This speaks to our faith and the powerful way the presence of Jesus comes to us in all circumstances, keeping all things well with our souls. One last believe it or not. Do you remember what Chloe said about how part of the human condition is seeing and hearing for ourselves. Well, we have something for you that involves a believe it or not. A simple little pottery bowl. Would you believe the world's smallest pewter gorilla is in this dish? We would like to say that the answer is yes. In fact, it's so small, I have to use tweezers to get it out, and I'm going to see if I can hold it up to you, and then maybe even use this. I have no idea what this is doing with this fabulous technology of a camera, but there is the world's smallest pewter gorilla, and we have it set up all the time in the Florida room underneath this contraption that has a horizontal magnifying glass, and I can usually trust that there's a critter always checking that out. I did pull out just one more of these Ripley's Believe It or Not cards, and here it is. Believe it or not, a raisin dropped into champagne will continue to rise and fall in the glass. And it's true, because even though I had never had champagne when I received these cards when I was 11 years old, I did wait and I did remember and tried it out, and perhaps you would try that too. You can even use kind of anything that, that's fizzy because it's all, all about bubbles. We are using the music of Anton Arensky for our times of meditation in this video series, and today's is just called Prelude in G Minor. And it has a really lovely sort of sort of theme a repetitive kind of theme and all right let's go one last 
look, if you can see the cards underneath Larry's car, and of course, the world's smallest pewter gorilla, and all these other, there's the Chena River paper and all of that. And here's everybody else, always waiting. It's so nice that they're always waiting. There we go, sorry about that little jiggle. And it looks like Lois and Eunice are waiting at the piano. This is Lois, She's, I think she's a sawtooth um, shark and not just any shark, the way Eunice also is a hammerhead shark. They're very special because they enjoy either playing the piano or perhaps just watching very closely. Sustaining God, thank you for Jesus, the true light and the true vine who connects us all, those we know and those we have not met. Thank you for how the story about Jesus walking on water made it clear to the disciples that he was the Messiah. Help us accept this without any questions or skeptical believe it or not. As we show reverence for life and pray for all of your children and creatures, we give thanks that all of us are sisters and brothers, friends as Jesus calls us friends, and we especially lift up those who live in Colombia, Ecuador, and Venezuela, who you know each by name. We lift up all with any health issues, all who are caregivers, and all who are transitioning from this life to the next, either alone or with loved ones. Thank you for giving us Jesus, by whose living, dying, and rising to new life assures us that we too are promised that new life. As faith-filled people, keep us filled with your holy gifts of hope, peace, love, and joy. God, for all that has been, we say thanks. For all that will be, we say yes. And we say thanks and yes in the name of the one who gave himself completely for us, Jesus. Amen. And may God bless you today. Amen.